Why Indonesia and why do we talk about plastic waste pollution? Well, they say Indonesia is a polluter number two, that plastic with leaks to the ocean. So we definitely got a lot of heat internationally, so we are taking the issue very, very seriously. And then, um, so Green Hope here, uh, what I'm going to talk about is really two things. One is broadly, what is our finding so far? What is the research based on our research, based on our experience in 15 countries, discussing, collaborating with governments, with NGOs, with uh, uh, companies uh, in trying to solve this huge, massive problem, which is the plastic waste pollution. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about Green Hope itself, how our solution fits into the entire ecosystem of the solution that we have to to bear. So we know this, and we get tired of seeing this. Why do we seem unable to fix it? So the first picture here, lower, upper left, is in Bali. It, underwater now, because of GoPro, we're able to see how much we're treating our ocean like toilets. So what that means is that all these items floating, and there's no way, simply no way, that the animals, the sea animals, the whales and all can survive in such a condition. So this video got uploaded and got our president a lot of heat that he sent divers to look for those trash that actually float around and during any given day will flood the beaches of Bali. And that continues on and on and on. So the second uh, top right is basically hard pieces of plastics. If you see a lot of flexible film, hard pieces of plastics that is inside the bird's stomach. So if you Google up uh, a movie called Plastic, uh, pollution, plastic uh, waste pollution, plastic island, I think you can see how much the stomach of the birds were flooded with hard pieces of plastics. These birds die in hundreds. So this starts to get really us scared. Uh, are we looking at the end of times here? Uh, it starts to feel like the end of times in our, all our holy books. And then these are actually just a, a prop in, in the, our, with our brothers and sisters in the Philippines where they literally a uh, project. And that is uh, a typical landfill, and I pulled that picture actually in a typical Indian landfill. I, Indonesian landfill is not that different as well. So suffice to say, this is a very serious problem. And if we don't solve this, we could end up being a species that really produce and consume ourselves to death, literally. So it's, it's that urgent. And I always tell people who we work with, even factories, plastic factories who've been there for 40 years, they'd be like, Tommy, we've seen this before, things are not going to change, things will go as usual. No, they were highly mistaken. The new generation, the millennials, the young people, our kids in schools, they get really, really properly educated. When they decide that our product, the excess of our product is no longer attractive, your business is finished upstream here. When the downstream people, the user decides. So it's not only a moral imperative, it's also a business survival imperative. That's how important it is. So it's actually present not only a risk, but how we see it, we like to see it as an opportunity. But it's also not a straightforward opportunity because as I delve deeper, uh, more and more, my partner, actually the scientist in Green Hope, his hair is all white, I don't have any hair. That's how tough the, the problem is. You really have to think through the problem very seriously. Why? We have to appreciate the complexity of one of the biggest disruptions. Is one of the biggest transitions recently because the world has been using and fall in love with plastic the last 40 years. Arguably, it's one of the best green from pers uh, creation perspective, actually, and highly functional and cheap. Who doesn't like that kind of model, right? So it's really the world fall in love, and we're consuming about four, 300 to 400 million tons every year. And that means 25 million containers. It doesn't even fit in our mind how, how to imagine that. And then, when it becomes a waste, those plastics will stay around for another 80 years, 100 years, 500 years. So literally, we're injecting our planet with plastic every single year through our consumption. If we look at recycling, one of the biggest news in recycling last year was in January 1st, when China decided, I want to stop recycling the world's plastic waste, right? And then we found out, Dr. Jenna Jambek created a report saying that apparently developed countries when they say circular economy, they put 70% of their plastic waste to China to be recycled there. So that's a pretty big circle. But that creates a lot of water problems because you need a lot of water. And then the excess of it can be full of microplastics. And then it creates a lot of residue problem that creates another social problem in the, in the landfills. 
So it, it's not easy, it's not easy. So recycling is definitely part of the solution, but it doesn't come without a cost. Uh, so both of us, we are uh, social entrepreneurs here. We are in World Economic Forum. We really study these issues very, very hard. We really study the issues from the bottom up, which is what is, we'd like to think ourselves as solutions provider and like a doctor. We need to understand the, the sickness before we prescribe the right solution. It's not like the same drug everywhere. So that's why we have the three solution that are we patented is a biodegradable solution all the way from the bioplastic that is from using cassava tapioca that has no conventional plastic at all inside and biodegrades faster all the way that additive that makes regular plastic can oxidize and biodegrades faster but it does need the sun or the heat and everything so all this solution has plus and minus and we are glad partnering with some strong brands in southeast asia and we've been in many countries and as you see uh, India, we're, we're still not here, so we look for the right partners who can really, together with the government, with the NGOs, trying to figure out what is the right solution for India. And we'll be happy and privileged if we can be part of the solution for it. Um, there's no truly other way. We all need to work together, people, planet, to choose prosperity and partnership. I pulled this actually from the, the event website, which I fully...